and then we should be able to surf down, get the medicine, and make some more progress in this flippity flan flan flantastic game. That's exactly what this game is now. We're in a flan fantastic experience not a fantastic no fans are for wusses we're talking about flannels all right everybody loves flannel question of the day how many of you guys actually floss yeah that's right we're starting off today's episode right off the bat with a question of the day because listen all right for some reason i have this itching suspicion i have this feeling that dentists who preach how flossing is the key to life and like how you gotta floss every single day or else you'll die or something, right? I feel like the, the dentists that preach that, which is basically every single dentist by the way, I feel like they don't actually practice what they preach. And uh, I know it's just a total hunch, I know there's no like factual information to back this up, but next time I'm at the dentist, I'm gonna go ahead and ask my dentist whether he slash she actually flosses. Because every time, you know, they're always asking us, making us feel bad about it, but I wonder if they actually practice what they preach or maybe it's like just a part of the dentistry industry like it's just a uh, an engraved thing like you just always got to ask about the patient's flossing habits or else it's just not a true dentist appointment I don't know anyways welcome back to Pokemon Crystal we got a twisted spoon you know that honestly very accurately describes my uh, my whole mindset right now I literally just woke up it's currently 11 21 a.m. which I know sounds pretty late for a lot of you morning people out there if I could speak English, but uh, you yeah, know for me. This is this is new All right, your boy almost never gets up this early especially in the summer and especially these past couple of days I've had a really bad habit of sleeping until like 3 p.m But I'm really really happy to say that I woke up at a decent time today Even though I was up pretty late and uh, I'm slowly getting back into the groove of things trying to fix my sleep schedule Because I do go back to school August 1st and I'm trying to basically remedy that as I uh, ease into the school year Also, I've just been trying this new productivity schedule, which has been working absolutely wonders for me I mean then again I've only done it for about two days but it's actually working incredibly well like so much better than I initially uh, uh, thought and I'll go ahead and explain that in further detail after we go over the team so without further ado what do we got what are we rolling with speaking of the team though in the last episode our, our team underwent a lot of changes so I'd highly recommend you guys go back and check that episode it was absolutely beautiful we explored the lighthouse we came into a poison crisis we talked about praying mantises it was a good old episode but I'll go ahead and link that down below as well as the icon I card if I if I remember to I don't know why I can't speak today but yeah peep the episode if you guys uh want to go ahead and check it out but anyways without further ado let's go over the team starting off here we got spooky the newest addition to the squad the do gong he was initially a member of the PC but he has now officially come out of his shell and he has joined the party it's freaking beautiful he's got the water nice typing with the lucky egg as well as ember and dizzy punch we're trying to level him up he's only level 13 so we're gonna try and make uh, a little bit of a difference in his level here trying to bump him up trying to get him to the rest of the team next up we got game Gabriel level 15 with the grass and flying type with synthesis stun for tackle and poison powder. Next up, we got Lime Films, the Starmy with the water and psychic type with a tackle, rapid spin recover, and bubble beam. Next up, we got Samta. You guys already know and love him. Flying around the world. If I can speak, I can't speak English today, man. I'm so used to recording later in the afternoon. I think it's just the fact that I'm recording at like a somewhat decent time. That's what's kind of throwing me off here. But we got present, cross chop, and thunder shock as well. And also, when it comes to commentary, uh, when you first wake up, your voice is usually a little more raspy. It's like a little, a little deeper. So I feel like that's that's what I'm experiencing right now, and it's just a total total new endeavor for me because usually I'll edit in the mornings if I'm up in the mornings and then I'll record in the afternoon and then I'll stream in the afternoon and stuff so it's very rare that I actually commentate before noon but anyways uh, we got Jam Sky here also knows peanut butter ground the rye horn with horn attack tail whip stomp and fury attack and then last but not least we got Dave the aerodactyl with the sharp beak which is now useless I don't know why I still have the sharp beak on there if I'm being totally honest but we got ancient power agility bite and supersonic uh, but yeah no commentating in the morning is is a process man and I, it's not even really the morning like it's it's borderline lunchtime it actually is straight up lunchtime we got olivine port though fast ship pier so what we got to do in today's episode which i figured out at the end of the last episode is we got to go over to some city that starts with an o unfortunately jasmine uh would not repeat the city name but i'm pretty sure it's just over here and we got to scoop up the medicine for this ampharos we don't want you to fall into the sea so you're not allowed in but I got an Ampharos to save! Come on, man! Why well, gotta be an asshole? Shelter are easy to catch here. They're kind of uh, rare elsewhere. Oh shoot, dude, I could I could use a shelter. Wait, could we get an encounter here? I think we can get an encounter here. Hold up. 
Hold up, let me let me check my my uh my my map. Um the map, um the map, something, 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 door of the explorer. Yo, shout out to that show. I know, um, I know they made like a like a there was Diego and there was Dora, right? And like Diego was like the uh the the equivalent to Dora, but I think he was like an explorer or something. Or wait, yeah, no, Dora is an explorer. What am I talking about? No, he was like the adventurer, right? If I can remember my childhood shows correctly, you had like Diego as the uh, adventurer, and then you had Dora as like the explorer. I don't even know if there's really a difference between those two, if I'm being totally honest. Do we even have a map? I went on this whole Dora talk, and we don't even have a map. Come on, man. But yeah, no, if you guys are Dora the Explorer experts, let me know, let me know down below exactly how that was laid out. I could have swore Diego was like a, like an animal enthusiast kind of thing, but I honestly don't remember. It's been like easily 12 years. Uh, I'm gonna assume this is a new encounter. I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't be, but then again, it could, it could be a part of the same town. Like, no, no, like, like, thing came down saying it's a part of a new town or it's a new route. So, instead, I'm going to play it safe and, and assume that it's not a new encounter. So, question, how are we supposed to actually, like, like, get this medicine? Um, I feel like this is different from Harkle's Silver. I feel like this is totally different. You see, this is what I get, man, for A, not paying attention, and B, just not paying attention. <laughs> But I think what we actually have to do now that I think about it is we probably have to take on the gym because then we'll get access to the gym badge um, And then I think they'll let us go over the sea. I don't know man Maybe they'll get a, give a surf. We could be something straight out of Pirates of the Caribbean or something I don't know. Uh, but anyways, we can't buy any potions because we have no money Let's just buy one. I guess I was really really aiming for those hyper potions I think we're pretty good on potions and stuff though I just want to make sure just because we had a lot of uh, risky endeavors in the previous episode I don't want to be taking any risks all right, I'm not playing these games. The only game that I'm playing is Pokemon Crystal, and I'm doing it well. I'll have City Pokemon Gym Leader Jasmine. Okay, well, wait. How are we supposed to fight the gym if Jasmine's in the tower? Hold up. Hold up. I have many questions. What's up? The gym leader is at the lighthouse. She's been turning to a sick Pokemon. Strong trainer has to be compassionate. Okay, but what does that have to do with the medicine? How the gym... Okay, there's a lot of stuff we gotta do. I thank goodness I looked this up, Barrels. We literally would have been here for hours. I am so sorry to all you uh, crystal veterans out there because I clearly have no idea what I'm doing. But what we gotta do is we gotta go all the way back to Ecritique. We gotta go to the Komodo Girls. We gotta we gotta get Surf, and then we gotta go all the way back down and then Surf down. I'm pretty sure, and then eventually we'll find Sea and Wood, which happens to have the Doctor, which happens to have the medicine. I don't know why they make it such an elongated process, and I don't know why. I skipped over surf <laughs> like they they just let you skip over surf it's it's so different from like the newer Pokemon games where everything is just handed to you which honestly I, I know it sounds like I'm complaining but I actually really like that about this game like I like how it doesn't just throw everything in your face you got to go out you got to adventure for it you got to explore and usually if I wasn't like doing an LP and if I was playing this on my own I probably well, okay, I probably still would have looked it up, but I'm thinking like from the perspective of like before internet when this game came out and the internet wasn't really a thing. Uh, you know, you couldn't just easily look up anything you wanted to, so... I'm thinking from that perspective, it'd be really cool to like have to go out and adventure and figure out all the, uh, the secrets and stuff by yourself. Like, you couldn't rely on an internet aid. Uh, but obviously for the sake of like, you know, actually getting through this game and me just not running around the town and, 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 and messing around for, you know, 30 minutes and wasting time, we should probably look it up just so we can actually make progress in the game. As a kid though, it would have been really cool to be able to experience that where everything is just, uh, super open-ended and you, you don't really know where everything is. Like the game doesn't just walk you through. It doesn't hold your hand the whole time. That's honestly my biggest complaint with Pokemon games. Like I get why they, uh, they have the whole hand-holding system just because it makes sense especially for like newer kids getting to the series not everybody is a veteran like us um, so obviously it makes sense but I feel like I feel like sometimes um, sometimes game freak they just they underestimate how smart kids are because kids kids are pretty smart man like they, they can figure out this back in 1937 all right, so you'd think they'd be able to figure out, you know, uh, a more modern version of this pretty easily. Insane hand-holding or otherwise, you would think they wouldn't have a problem with it. Uh, but anyways, we're gonna find the Kimono Girls, I believe it's right here, right? Dance theater. <gasps> we're going to the theater, boys! Yo, I'm a theater kid, let's go, boy. Let's go, sign me up. I'm playing Shrek and Shrek the Musical. What's well, good? You have lovely Pokemon. May I see them in battle? No, you may not, but you will see my Shrek costume in full effect. Don't you even worry about it. All right, I got like one of those inflatable blow-up suits. That's literally just, it makes me about the size of an ogre. I actually, yo, 
no joke, all right, and I'm sure you guys have seen this before, but I really, really, really want to get one of those inflatable dinosaur costumes. I absolutely want one, 100%. Like, that is that is a big uh, top-tier item on my list right now in terms of things that I want. And uh, you you bet your bottom dollar your boy's getting one for Halloween this year. I am so incredibly pumped. There was one kid who wore um, who wore a costume like that to uh, school last year. And it was so funny seeing him in this big dinosaur costume. And uh, it just it takes up so much space. And it's so, I, I don't know, it's just so cool, man. The way that it operates, like the whole thing inflates. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. I can throw a picture on screen uh, if you guys uh, aren't sure. Bop! Bop. By the way, speaking of Bwop, we got merch coming soon. Actually, last night, I basically finished the mer merch store. Like, it is 100% more or less set up. Uh, unfortunately, though, I'm not going to officially launch it yet, though, just because of the fact that I'm waiting on my own shirts to come in so I can make an announcement video for it. And also, uh, I'm also waiting on uh, Sleep Lock GFX, and if I can announce the Sleep Lock and the merch store in one video, I'd prefer to do that. So it's probably not going to be like another week or so before we actually are able to launch the merch store, mainly because of the fact that uh, I just ordered the shirts last night and it's going to take a little bit to get here. Um, but it's super exciting. I'm super pumped for it. Hopefully you guys are excited to rep your own merch. We got Blop shirts coming. We got Willem shirts coming. We got, uh... We got, uh, what else we got? We got Ice Milker and Anti-Ice Milker shirts coming. It's about to be freaking nuts. The designs turned out so incredible. Big shout out to Lozy98, also known as Guy, uh, for hooking me up. He absolutely killed it. He's also working on... Uh, Soul Link GFX right now, and he's also working on uh, podcast GFX for, for me and Ryan, so that's going to be absolutely nuts. Uh, he's really, really great at what he does. Super nice guy. Big shout out to him. Uh, anyways, though, we're going to go into my boy Dave. What else is new? We got a mod chop here. We got a mod chop this man's face. Oh, chop his head off. Woo! I don't know. I'm really pumped up right now. It's just, it's really nice to be productive because over these past couple of days, I have been anything but productive. Uh, yesterday was super productive because I started doing this... Uh, this uh, this new organization schedule, which I'll go ahead and talk about here. Why not? So this new schedule that I'm doing right is I have a Google Calendar set up where I plan everything out like by the hour. And I didn't think this would work, but it actually is working like incredibly well. Basically, just like the night before, um, or like every single night, right? I plan out the next day's events. And I just, I try to stick to those events as best as possible. So, like, I'll have, uh, like, for today, I have uh, Recording Crystal, which is what I'm doing right now for, like, the first two hours here uh, of my day. And then I'm actually going to be going to the mall for a huge chunk of my day. So, I left out, like, uh, five hours in the middle of my day for that. And it's all, like, estimation. Like, obviously, I'm not sure exactly how long I'm going to be at the mall. I'm not sure exactly uh, how long it's going to take to record Crystal or whatever. But usually what I do is I'll just overestimate a little bit. Like, two episodes of Crystal would usually take me about an hour, hour and a half. Uh, so what I did was I just made it into a two-hour time slot on the schedule. But long story short, what I do is I literally just plan everything out like that. Like, after I get home from the mall today, I have a, uh, a scheduled stream plan, so about three hours allocated to streaming. I'm also going to be doing a little bit of editing before and then a little bit of editing after. It basically just gives you a perfect visual representation of your day. And I don't know why that's so helpful, but it really, really is. And obviously, I haven't had much experience rolling with this new, uh, this new time management thing. Uh, it's, it's totally new to me. But from what I've experienced so far, it has been working wonders. Because for me, it's like I... My biggest problem is I don't have enough discipline. Like, I don't have the, um... I don't have the, the, the willingness to push myself to say, Hey, I'm doing this now. You know, it's more, it's more like, oh, I could hold it off for a couple more hours. Oh, I could watch one more YouTube video, you know, procrastination is a bitch. All right. So it's cool that this Google calendar, even though it's not like, it's not super strict and obviously I'm the total boss over it. Like I can, I can schedule whatever I want to schedule. It's, um, it's really nice because it basically lays out everything that I want to get done in the day because I always have like goals for the day. It's just, I never... I never have them planned out to where I can actually accomplish them, and I feel like having everything planned out this way really, really helps me in terms of uh, getting everything organized. In summary, it just kind of gives me that sense of urgency. It's kind of like, uh, hey, you were supposed to record Crystal 10 minutes ago, you know? Like, it just is a constant reminder, like, this is what I should be doing, this is what I should be allocating my time to, and, um, 
it, it really, really helps to have it visualized like that. Um, it's also been helping with my sleep schedule because like now that I know, now that I know I have events on this calendar, um, and I, I know I have things to do and I know exactly what time I have to do them, it urges me and it gives me like a sense of urgency to wake up. Um, which is something that I totally didn't expect, so I'm really, really- Oh my god, look at that tongue! <gasps> Bro, this man's looking up a storm! Jeez! Polly Toad, more like Polly Tongue! Oh my god! Anyways, um... <laughs> so, yeah, that's- that's- that's my TED Talk for today. Um... I, I don't know. I, I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's honestly been helping a lot. And I think especially with school coming up, um, having something like that to, to organize like homework time and, and make sure I stay on schedule with everything else YouTube wise, like that's going to be huge. Um, just because I, I know without it, I probably, I probably would end up procrastinating or I'd end up spending too much time on one thing and not allocating enough time to another thing. So it's really, really just helped me get ahead and, um, it basically allows me to map out what I want to do and allows me to easily visualize it and, and conquer it. Um, so that's been super nice. Side note though, hopefully you guys having a fantastic Wednesday today. Thank you so much for your support as always. And uh, also thank you for your, your comments on the last video on Pokemon Crystal episode, whatever it was. I've honestly forgot the number, uh, but the episode that went up on Monday. Thank you guys for your comments on that. I was talking about a lot of like pretty deep talks. I had asked the question in the previous episode about like uh, inconsistency versus consistency, which I know isn't exactly, hey, that's an Entei. That's not exactly like the best um, phrasing to use for what I'm actually talking about. What I actually mean is like regular uploads on a set day as opposed to just not having a strict schedule. So it's more like a strict schedule versus a lenient schedule. It's not, it's not so much consistency versus not, or versus inconsistency. I feel like that's kind of a bad way to describe it. Uh, but anyways, we had this really deep talk in the last episode and I really appreciate you guys giving your feedback on it. It seems like a lot of you guys uh, actually don't mind having quote-unquote inconsistent uploads, which uh, is honestly surprising, but I, I kind of get it. That's a bite. Okay. Um. Pause. I don't know why I'm not going into Dave. Like, I don't know why this time, out of all times, would be the best time to not go into my strongest mod. Like, I've been going into Dave willy-nilly on freaking bell sprouts and Magikarps and everything in between, but you send in an Entei, and all of a sudden it's like, NOPE! Dave's off limits. Alright, let's go for the Ancient Power. Pa powder? Powder? I keep saying powder. I don't know why I can't pronounce Ancient Power. Like, that, that's actually a problem. I was having this this issue in the last episode. I kept saying powder instead of power. It's, it's, it's a problem, man. It's a power! I don't know! Anyways, uh, we're rocking and rolling. Bucket of Chloe was defeated. Yo, good game. I mean, you tried. You tried. I'm pretty sure they're supposed to have evolutions, right? So her having an Entei was kind of cool. Kind of reminiscent of that. Please give me an HM. What's up? Not only are the Komodo girls great dancers, they're also skilled at Pokemon. I always challenged them, but I've never even left a scratch. The way you battled it was like watching a dance. It was a rare treat to see. I want you to have this. Don't worry. Take it. You know, this is why I'm a theater expert. Freaking sign me up. Give me some vocal exercises. Here we go. I rock it and roll and like Sharpay from High School Musical. Here I go, boys! Going into theater. Um, we got Surf. Sweet. It's a move that lets Pokemon swim across water. Awesome. Alright, who can learn Surf? Surf is an incredibly powerful HM. So I will definitely rock out with this. Who's learning Surf? What do we got? Who, who's, who's gonna learn it? We got Spooky as well as Lion Films able to learn it. Oh, okay, because it's not, it's not randomized. Sweet. So we can actually teach Surf to both these Pokemon. And they will be able to make uh, very good use of this HM, so I'm totally down for that. We'll get rid of Rapid Spin, because I'm pretty sure Rapid Spin is weaker than Tackle. And it's not like we have any, like, rocks to worry about. I mean, who actually uses, like, entry hazards in, uh, in game, you know? But we'll go ahead and we'll teach Surf as well to Spooky Bees. That's going to be a really powerful stab water type attack. And I think that'll work out just beautifully. Spooky's gonna learn Surf. Freaking beautiful. We got Icy Wind as well. Who can learn Icy Wind? Can anyone else learn Icy Wind? I keep, like, checking to see if anyone can learn Icy Wind. But nobody ever wants to learn it, man. It's kind of unfortunate. Not even gonna lie. But now, we're gonna head all the way back. We're gonna yeet all the way to... Uh, uh what was the city name? What was the city name? I don't know. The one with the lighthouse. We're going to eat all the way back there, and then we should be able to surf down, get the medicine, and make some more progress in this flippity flan, flan, flantastic game. That's exactly what this game is now. We're in a flantastic experience. Not a fantastic. No, fans are for wusses. We're talking about flannels. All right? Everybody loves flannels. 
those stripes, those squares. They're beautiful, man. You see how many colors they come in? Oh, flannels are beautiful. I love flannels. What's up? Hi, are you a cute trainer? May I see your Pokemon? Wow, you complimented me, but all you want to see is my Pokemon. I see how it is. I see how it is. I feel, I feel ashamed. I feel abandoned. She only wants me for my Pokemon. Pfft, what a, what a shame. Anyway, she's gonna send in Fortress. That could be an explosion, so I'm not gonna risk it, and I'm gonna go into Dave. Because I feel like Dave could, could handle this. He's gonna go for the takedown. That's actually reasonably powerful, but good thing Dave is a rock type. We'll go for the ancient power, as always. Absolutely annihilate him, because we don't have wing attack. Bop, 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 bop. Crit, nice and sweet. Here we go. Mr. Mime, I'll take it to the bang and back. Gonna bite this man back to where he came from. I like how he's kind of turned off to the side. He's looking like a little creepy stalker boy. He's like, mm, let me stalk you in your sleep. Ha, ha, ha. Moving on to a different conversation topic, because I honestly don't want to talk about that anymore. Um, hopefully you guys are having a fantastic Wednesday. As always, we're chilling, having a good old time. Uh, going back to the whole consistency debate, right? I don't I don't plan on changing anything. Ah, oh, shucks. I don't plan on changing anything anytime soon. Like, we're still going to be rocking out with the Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's the goal. That's the objective. Um, but for a future series, I might take the approach of just... Um, editing and, and getting up episodes whenever I can, you know, I feel like that'd be smart. Uh, but then again, I also feel like having a schedule keeps me on track. So may maybe the best way to do it is instead of having like, um, instead of having like a, a quote unquote inconsistent schedule, maybe we could find a compromise. Maybe we could have a schedule, but just make it into a less frequent schedule. That way it's like maybe two uploads a week as opposed to three, because uh, that'll still give me the ability to uh, spend more time on the edits and put more effort in. And it would also uh, slow down the uploads so a lot of you guys can keep up with the series because that was honestly the biggest thing that I was hearing from people uh, and that I've been hearing from people. And I totally relate to this. Like I, I experience this on a daily basis. That's why I don't watch Pokemon. Come on, LPs. Like, I, I just don't have the time anymore. So, yeah, I totally get the, the perspective of, you know, everybody's uploading a Pokemon LP. You're subbed to so many different content creators, and it's really hard to keep up with each individual series, especially if every single person's uploading, like, three a week. I mean, you got to think that's an hour and a half of content um, at, at the least from every single content creator you're watching. So, like, that's, that's a lot. That is a lot, a lot, a lot. So, I can see how cutting back on content would make sense. Um, but as I said, you know, it's different for all sorts of different people. So, I don't know. Uh, why am I still not allowed? Why, why, why is this still a pro- I have surf. We don't want you to fall into the sea so you're not allowed in. What? Okay, let me, let me try surfing somewhere else. Maybe I gotta surf down here. I probably gotta surf down here. That would make the most sense. Yeah, I don't know why that tunnel is blocked off though. Like, I don't know why they're like, oh, you can you can surf on your Pokemon. Oh, is this gonna be an encounter? This is gonna be an encounter. We got an encounter in uh, this city here. It's my boy! It's my boy! You Shadow Clone Jutsu! Look at him! Look at him! Uh, unfortunately though, that is dupes, or maybe even fortunately, if you want to think about it that way, because now we can run away and, uh, and get a new encounter. But in terms of the typings we can catch, let's go and look at our team. We have. What's it? We have water, ice, grass, flying, psychic, um, what else? Ground, rock, and I think that's it. So we have like seven types that we're able to catch here, which is not bad at all. I will take that to the bank. Like we have a lot of options here in terms of the typings we can catch. So we'll go ahead and roll with it. Hopefully I'm going the right way. Hopefully, uh, oh, this is Route 40. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. We can get two encounters here. We can get an Olivine City encounter, and then we can also get a Route 40 encounter. So we'll rock out with it. Here we go. What are we gonna get? We got a Needle Queen. Yo, we can catch that. We can freaking catch that. Needle Queen is incredibly powerful, and this would give us access to poison types. So I am totally a thousand percent down with this. Um, let's go for the Dizzy Punch. I don't think that'll kill. We're only four levels below, but I I'm gonna let Spooky handle this. You know what? I am confident in Spooky's endeavors. He has this. Look at this man go. He's punching fools. He doesn't even have fists. I love him. All right, we'll go for the Ember. He's going for the... Oof. Oof. Okay. Maybe we shouldn't keep Spooky in. We got a burn, though. <laughs> okay. All right. Good job, Spooky. Um, we're gonna switch out just to play it safe, man, because I, I, I don't trust where this is going. Um, I guess we can go into, uh, Jam Sky. Let's go into Jam Sky. 
Let's go into James Guy. He's super defensive. Also, he's burned now, so his physical attack should do less. I think James Guy will be just fine. He's going to go for the tail whip, which is going to lower our defense. But, dude, you're burned, and I got defense through the sky. And also, I'm only one level uh, below you, so this should be good. I'm going to go for the horn attack, try and weaken him down a little more. Try and try and give James Guy some, some experience here, even though he doesn't actually gain experience from catching Pokemon. I don't know why they waited until Gen 6 to change that. Like, they totally should have changed it sooner. Anyways, he's going to be willed down by his burn, so I'm going to go ahead and just start throwing balls. Um, I would absolutely love a Nidoqueen. This Pokemon is incredibly dope, and I would love to have him on the team. Not even going to lie. Let me go and throw a great ball. We only have five of them, though. We definitely got to stock up on some more balls before we head over to Route 40, but here we go. What are we going to get? Nothing. That's what we're going to get. He's going to go for the double kick. Uh, we're taking it. We're taking it. Look at us go. Look at James Guy go. We're eating it up. Sucking it up like the dirt on my ground. I don't know what I'm saying. All right, great ball number two. Here we go. Come on, Nido Queen. I don't ask much of you. Just please. Just please. Please do this thing for me. Just get in the ball. I want to I wanna care for you. I want, I, wanna, I want to love you. Just please. I don't ask much. I really, really don't. And also, don't get a crit or else I'll actually be really mad at you. Thank you. Good thing you didn't get a crit. That's fantastic. Ah. Uh, Okay, I think he can survive one more turn because Let me okay. Let me switch out. I'm gonna switch out instead of healing because I don't want to waste a potion So we'll just switch out going to Dave because Dave could take hits and assuming it lives this burn Hopefully it lives this turn so we can uh, have another shot to catch it. Don't die, please Don't die. There we go. All right. Here we go. Last great ball. It's our last chance. Come on We either catch it now or never we either catch it now or never give me something good Give me something good. Give me a catch. We're not going to get a catch. Not even in the slightest. That was... That, honestly, we did a good job, though. Um, the, the burn ended up being... Uh, uh, what's it? It was kind of like a blessing in disguise, I guess was the, the phrase that I was going for. But in reality, it was a curse in disguise. <laughs> Like, I thought it was a good thing, but, you know, ended up knocking him out. Before we move on, though, let's go ahead and heal up, and we'll also grab some more balls. Then we'll head over to Route 40, and uh, hopefully catch uh, Pokemon this time? Maybe? I don't know. Hopefully. It's really nice that we're making so much progress, though. Like, it's, uh... It's, it's refreshing, man, because not only have we been making progress in this game, we've also been making a lot of progress in Battle Revolution as well, and uh, that's just been awesome. By the way, shout out to Battle Revolution. Battle Revolution made a return on uh, Tuesday, which was yesterday, by the time you guys see this, so if you guys do want to go ahead and peep that, I would highly recommend it. It was a, a powerful return back into the series. I think we have, like, two more, three more Coliseums, and then we're done with that game, so that's kind of nuts. Also, uh, we've been planning out some other... Um, other collaborative projects. I right? I don't want to say anything too much, and I know you guys are already expecting Soul Link. Uh, but even outside of Soul Link, we're planning a lot of stuff in the squad. So get pumped for that. I'm really really excited for future projects to come. We have so many things planned. It's about to be crazy. You have to warm up warm up before going into the water. That's basic. Yeah. Why would you go swimming if you're not warm? All right, that's like the whole motive for swimming. You get in the water to cool off. That is like the extent of what water is for. Nah, you think we have to hydrate from it? Not at all. We just got to get in the water to cool down. That's all we need. I know he was talking about like warming up as in like stretching and stuff, but I didn't want to take it that way. I didn't want to, I didn't want to take it that way, man. I just didn't really feel like it. We're going to go for the serve. Spooky's going to actually be able to put in work. Look at him go. Look at him go. He's doing the diggly darn thing. I love him. I love him. Spooky. Spooky. He's great. He's fantastic. He's surfing away. I'm digging it. Uh, what else we got? We have an Ampharos. Yo, speak of the devil. Let me change Pokemon. Yeah, let's go into, um, let's go into Jam's guy. We're park ground. I'm going to start taking advantage of, um, of more of my team. I feel like 99% of this game has been, oh, let's go into Dave, you know, and let's switch train a little bit, but I haven't actually, like, I haven't actually taken advantage of the Pokemon that I have. Like, I haven't, like, seriously used any of these Pokemon in battle outside of Dave, really. Like, Dave has just been the one sweeping everybody. Um, so I'm gonna try and take advantage and, and use some more of my team more. Just because I feel like that'll obviously balance out the levels. And also, we gotta get some more experience on more of our team. We can't just solo run the game with Dave. It's not gonna end well. A lot of you guys were telling me that I should probably grind soon. Uh, which, that's, that's probably smart. That's, that's definitely probably smart, especially with uh, all the gyms we're going to be coming up against. We got Jasmine, as well as I'm pretty sure we have a gym down here. So that'll be that'll be an experience. Oh, I just realized we're like 40 minutes into today's episode. I didn't even realize. Time has just been flying by, man. 
Time has just been yeeting by. We'll go ahead and get this encounter, and then we'll wrap up the episode. Uh, Fury attack. Bop, 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 bop. I still got to record one more episode after this, and it's currently 11.55 a.m., so I have, like, five more minutes until I wanted to be done with these recordings. But, you know, it's fine. We're not leaving, I don't think, for, like, another hour for the mall. Which, uh, by the way, the reason why we're going to the mall... Um, I don't even think I mentioned this. The reason why we're going to the mall is because we're trying to do some, like, school shopping sort of stuff. I gotta get a new backpack, and uh, I gotta get some, some school supplies, obviously, so... That'll be fun. Um, we got Eradicate. Okay, we can't catch normal types, I don't think. So we'll go ahead and run. Bop, 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 bop. Give me something good. Give me something I can catch. I'd appreciate it. Please. Oh, great sea. Oh, oh, great water vessel. Please. Please grace me with your Firos. <laughs> All right. All right. I'll take a Firo, man. I mean, that's going to be... Um that's going to be a, a, a normal type, so if we really wanted to add normal types to the team, we could, but we can indeed catch this because it is the flying type as well. So that's dope. We're going to get a crit with that. Let's go for the ember again. Why not? Try and whittle him down a little more. He's going to go for the peck. Wow. On the plus side, Furo actually has a flying type attack, so I don't know. I don't know. Might be worth investing in. Uh, but I think in reality, Furo will just kind of chill on the PC. Uh, I mean, Furo is super cool. He's a dope Pokemon, but I don't think he's going to be of too much use to us. It would be nice just to be able to catch a uh, normal type Pokemon, but outside of that, I don't think Furo is really going to do much for us. We have way better flying types on the team as evidence from Dave. Uh, we're going to throw a great ball. We have 17 now, so that's pretty perfect. We're not going to catch it though. Come on, man. Come on, man. Don't be doing this to spooky. Don't be doing this, man. Let's switch out into Dave. 100%. I'm playing it safe. I really don't want to risk Spooky because Spooky's actually becoming incredibly useful, especially with Surf, man. And also for, like, weakening Pokemon down. He's doing a fantastic job. So, Spiro, we got the great ball. Please get in the ball. I, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, look at my boy. Firo just went from a Firo to a friendo. <laughs> that was bad. That was really bad. <laughs> That was really bad. He uses his long beak to attack. It has a surprisingly long reach, so it must be treated with caution. This man's a long-range attacker. He's taking his beat and he's yeeting it across the field, throwing it at people. He pulls out a bow and arrow and he's like, ah, bop! Uses his beak as an arrow. I could see it. I could see it. We're gonna go ahead and nickname him after somebody from the comment section of the previous episode. So if you guys do want a Pokemon named after you, answer the question of the day, all the great kind of stuff, and I got you dudes. So in the previous episode, I had asked the question, what is the meaning of life? And Jonah responded in all caps and with spaces in between each letter, he said, Dave is the meaning of life. And honestly, I couldn't agree more. And with Firo being Dave's like secondhand cousin, I could totally see it. So we're going to name this boy Jonah after my boy. Thank you so much for your comment, my guy, as well as your support on the series. And that goes out to all of you guys. Thank you so much. You guys are freaking beautiful. We got Jonah here. Uh, I think I might just do Jonah. His name is technically Jonah Ka 83 Actually, you know what? Let's just do the whole name. We might as well. We might as well. I feel like Jonah is more, like, aesthetically pleasing, but we might as well reference the entire username. No need to cut off those extra characters. You never know, man. Those extra characters might be incredibly useful, except I don't think we have access to numbers, so I think we might just have to do, uh, Jonah Ka! <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. We'll roll with it. That's pretty cool. Big shout out to Jonah Ka. Thank you so much for the support. With that all being said, though, I think we're going to wrap this episode up right in the middle of this lake. I mean, we literally just have one little essence of life in the top right corner. Can we get rid of him? Can we? There we go. Look at us alone in solitude in the middle of this vast ocean. But uh, with that all being said, thank you guys so much for your support on today's episode. As always, hit that like button down below. Comment, subscribe. I don't know. Do the diggly darn thing, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Peace. You guys remember Life of Pi? Yeah.